All right, we're here today working on this Craftsman Riding Lawnmower 16 horse overhead valve Briggs and Stratton motor. Probably dates back to around 2000, and you can tell it's super clean and like new condition. A moderate amount of hours on it from what the owners told me. It runs for about 15 20 minutes and then dies out. Um, he went ahead and replaced the coil because someone told him that was the most likely place that maybe the coil was overheating. So he replaced the spark plug and the coil and it's still doing the same thing. I had him clean the fuel shutoff solenoid on it. On the bottom of the carburetor there's a fuel shutoff solenoid on these. Let's see if I can write right there that gold color item. And that was working okay. It was popping up and down every time we turn the key off and on, so that's working properly. We also checked the flow through the fuel line and through the tank, and that was flowing real good. I took the fuel line off and drained it into a two liter bottle and watched the flow. The tank never became airlocked, and you could hear air going into the tank through the vent in the gas cap, so there's no vent problem with the gas cap. And that led me to an issue on these overhead valve engines that comes up from time to time when they get a little bit older and with quite a few hours on them. These um, valve clearance needs to be adjusted on a regular basis. And we've got the intake valve on the bottom and the exhaust valve on the top. So what you do is you take out these four 10 millimeter bolts, pop the cover off, which is actually right here. And then we're going to rotate the crankshaft around by turning this top pulley by hand until you can tell that you're in the top dead center position and both of the lifter assemblies are in their loose position. So then we're going to stick the feeler gauge between the valve and the rocker arm and measure the clearance. And it's supposed to be four one thousandths on the intake and six on the exhaust. We're going to measure and see what this is. All right, we just checked it. It's supposed to be four on the intake, and that is about 15 right now. And we're supposed to be six on the exhaust, and that's at 30. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust them. We're going to use a Torx bit to loosen the center part, and then a regular wrench to loosen the outer ring. And we're going to adjust it down until it's right where it's supposed to be, and then tighten it back up again. Mm -hmm. Alright, we're going to use the 10 millimeter box den wrench to grab the outer nut width. Alright, so what we do is we've got the 4 millimeter feeler gauge in there, and we've got this all loosened up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to finger tighten the jam nut down until that feels like it's just got a little bit of tension on it and Fred's going to try and move yeah, it a little bit. And it, it's, it's snug. Snug, but not too tight. Yeah, snug, but not too tight. We'll loosen it up a little. How's yeah, that? Is I that can, better? I can move it. Yeah. Okay. And now we're going to put the wrench over the adjuster and hold it steady and lift up on it a little bit while we're tightening the adjuster just a little bit like so. And then we're going to put our Torx bit in here. This is actually the lock nut or lock screw that holds that whole nut assembly in place at the right depth. And once we get that, we'll verify it and make sure it's right, just like we did the top one. And there you go, routine maintenance item on these Briggs & Stratton engines. And after you get a few years on them, it's a good idea to go through and adjust the clearances. Every one is set different, so you know, make sure you look up yours on some sort of reference book or online before you try and adjust it. All the numbers are different. Each model and each make has different clearances. And Hopefully we'll show you, are we going to start this today or are we not going to start it today? We can try it. Yeah. We're going to start it up and just see if it sounds a little quieter. We won't be able to let it run for an hour and see if it stalls out again or not, but we'll be able to hear it run. Alright, there you go. Thanks for watching. And thanks to Fred Aker for letting me film his lawnmower today. Have a great day.